please welcome to the stage Eva Blake. I sit down and open my legs and say, come a little bit closer. Step right up to the cunt campfire and let me tell you a story. <laughs> I'm in a room with amazing women at the Maximize Your Pleasure live boot camp, and they all scooch just a little bit closer. I tell them, you can look as long as you want. I describe exactly what I can see in the mirror between my legs. I walk through all of the parts of my anatomy, and then... <sighs> I tell them when I was a young teenage girl and I was trimming my pubic hair with a pair of scissors and I caught some of my own flesh between the blades. I point out the scars from my biopsies after a series of abnormal pap smears when I was 19. I take a breath, I pulse and flex my pelvic floor and I tell them with enthusiasm how much fun my first time fisting was, and oh boy, didn't I stretch. <laughs> I talk about my relationship with my body, specifically my genitals, and one after another, we all take a turn. All of these women share their own personal story, heartbreak, and victory. I haven't met a single woman in my life, in my work, that hasn't had some kind of emotional struggle around her sexuality, her sexual pleasure, her sense of freedom, her right to feel autonomous in her own body. Many of us have dozens or even hundreds of stories of feeling pushed up against, pressed upon, penetrated, mitigated, controlled, manipulated, or legislated out of our right to be in our body. And I am a feminist sexologist because I want none of us in this world to have any of those kinds of stories. I'm a body worker and a mentor and a coach, an agitator, a provocateur. And in my one-on-one -on -one work, I get deeply intimate with my clients. I work primarily in the space of eradicating sexual shame. And I teach erotic, emotional, and embodiment skills to people who want to feel free and confident in all their erotic moments. And in that one-on-one -on -one work with people, I am right there with them, but I keep my clothes on. <laughs> so this boot camp is real different. It is immersive and participatory. It's full throttle, and it's fully naked. It's three full intense days of exploring how do we own our sexual power without apology? And for me, I have to be on, on in every way imaginable as a facilitator. To be warm and kind and welcoming, and if you know me at all, you know that this is difficult for me. <laughs> it's much easier for me to be direct and challenging, to push people a little further to their own edge. This is also a place where I tell some of the stories that I don't tell anywhere else. Places of my own successes and massive fuck-ups in relationship, in sex, in abuse, and even in breakthrough. At the end of the second day, I facilitate a mindful masturbation circle, a communal solo sex ritual, or a sacred circle jerk, if you will. Now, it is one thing for us to get into a room together and to talk about the importance of our sexuality or even to share the details of what we do with our hands or hips or lips. And I know for me, I can still say measured and calculated and a little bit distant. So it is something entirely different to get in a circle and face each other and fuck ourselves. <laughs> the stakes are higher. <laughs> There's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. And it is a ritual that rocks me to my core every single time. So I bring the lights down and I turn the heat way up. And when I'm in the room alone while everyone else is at dinner, I set the altar in the middle of the circle. It's a short, low table and it's covered with a silky red fabric with a candle in the middle. 
and I place all kinds of sensational delight toys in the middle. Floggers and whips and canes and feathers and rope and slappy things and nipple clamps and just a wide variety of gadgets, gizmos. And when the women arrive after dinner, they are nervous. Oh my God, what's going to happen? How's it going to be? I've never done anything like this before. And they're also beautiful and incredible and appreciating each other. Their ritual sexy finery, the kimono, the colors, yellow and reds and purples, the red lace teddy, the fresh lipstick and the jewelry. They're so sweet to each other. And the room is delicious. Now we all have our own space, our own mat. We have gloves and lube and any kind of insertable or genital toys on our own. And we're laid out like spokes in a wheel from that center altar. And I facilitate a warm-up where I invite everyone to touch all the parts of themselves. So I start. Let's just take a breath. And feel your feet on the floor and feel the fabric on your skin. And see if in this confined space that you have, you can let your body, your sex, your imagination, even dare your audacity, have a little bit of real estate as you stretch. From the top of the head, scratching the scalp and petting the hair, letting your fingers fall over the contours of your bones and across your collar and down your arms. And take off a layer of clothes. And when I undo my robe, I'm wearing black panties and a black bra and a black leather chest harness that is accentuated in little rhinestone grommets that I handmade all by myself. And as soon as my robe hits the floor, I think, oh my God, you can see me. (laughs) And is this too much? Is this too kinky? Is that too kinky, all that stuff in the middle of the room? Did I push too much, too far, too fast? (sighs) And I take a breath, come back to the body, circle the breasts, touch the belly, appreciate the bigness of the belly, whatever size it is, find the hips, swirl the hips. I have facilitated a circle like this more than a dozen times in the woods, in my own home, in a professional setting. And I really want to lead in a good way. I want to hold a container, a space for catharsis and curiosity and orgasm and opportunity. I don't want to dictate or demand. So I take a breath and take my bra off, and take my panties off, and keep going, keep describing all the ways that you could touch, that I could touch, slapping and scratching all the way down to the toes and back up the legs, and then I come to the sex, (laughs) and I move across the genital complex, and the entire time that I'm doing this, I'm describing very precisely exactly the ways that I'm touching myself, just in case. Someone in the room wants to keep their eyes closed and follow along. But I'm also under a spotlight, and I'm saying you can watch. (sighs) And after I have covered all the nooks and crannies, the entire vulva and into the vagina and into the rectum even, I need a little bit of a break. Which is good news because it's freestyle time, which means that I stop facilitating and let everybody do what they want to do. So I turn away from the circle for just a moment and I close my eyes tight and my heart is racing and racing and racing and I take a breath. (sighs) What is it that I want? Coming back to Eva, stepping out of being the teacher for a moment, what is it that I want? And so I turn around and I know what I want and I start reaching for it towards that altar and I can't find the thing that I want. I'm looking for my favorite slender, flexible bamboo cane, and I don't see it, and I start to get anxious about it. I thought I put it there. Where is it? Where is this thing? And then I see her across the circle from me, and she has it, 
and she's tapping and stinging and smiling, and I am immediately impatient. <laughs> Hurry up, I think, <laughs> while still smiling and trying to be warm and welcoming. And that cane, just even a few years ago, I had the same kind of existential crisis about that cane bringing it out to a circle like this and the tower of toys that I was having about my bedazzled harness. Good Lord. And I watch her for just a moment, and she is smiling, and she is glowing, and she is unafraid, and I am washed over with a sense of tenderness because she has been a friend who has become a client who has been a student, and I have seen her across her own line of sexual evolution, and I get to see myself in her in that moment, and it is so sweet. Look how far we've come. Look how sweet it is. And as soon as she makes any kind of way to drop that thing at the center of the altar, I am like diving in to grab it practically from her hand because the cane is something that brings me back to my skin. The tap, 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 sting. Tap, 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 sting. I love it. I get swept away in the rhythm. And when I tap and then sting, I can sting a little harder. And when I sting, I yelp a little bit. And when I yelp, I cuss out loud. And in a circle like this, after I cuss, I laugh. And it kind of breaks the ice in the room of the noise. And there's more laughter. And now there's a sense of it's OK to look and play. And it's sweet. And there's so much to look at in a room like this. Bodies moving and glistening. There's even someone in the room who's quiet and tears are coming down their face. There's someone staring into the mirror and fucking themselves in increasingly intricate positions with their legs. And, well, I can't do that with my legs. <laughs> and it's exquisite to see so many options. So the option that I take next is just to do something that I regularly do for myself, my own personal little sexercise, because I'm actually a little in my head and I want to come back into my body. So I plant my feet and I look into the mirror and I feel fantastic. I look fantastic. I love the way that the leather is wrapped around my torso and is triangulating my tits. I'm wearing black nitrile gloves, the dark hair, the red lips. I love what I see in the mirror, and I feel fantastic. And so I do little squats. And those little squats become bigger squats, and they're in time with the music overhead. And as soon as I get to the very top, I squeeze my pelvis and thrust my hips forward, and I start combining that with my magic wand right in front of me. And so it becomes this little game that I play with myself in the mirror right ahead of me, which is across the bodies of three other women. So that's pretty fun. And I'm <laughs> squatting up and down. And when I get to the bottom of the squat, I I try to just release and relax everything in my pelvis and shake it all loose so that when I get to the very top, it's a very, very tight, tight squeeze. And there's a lot of contracting and releasing and contracting and releasing. So the very big game, the like physical endurance test of this whole thing is can I stay standing while I'm having an orgasm and shaking everywhere? And yes, it's true. And I laugh and the room says, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. And then there's 15 minutes left. And so I'm the timekeeper, and of course, that gets me into my head 15 minutes. Should I have another orgasm? Do I really need another orgasm? Because here's the thing, it's not just an other orgasm for me. It's like a sequence. It's two, it's four, it's six. It's like an entire wraparound experience here. And I hear this voice. You know, when you come, it sounds like an air raid siren. And that was a compliment. It was an acknowledgement of power in the moment that it came from that other person to me. And I celebrated in that moment. But in this moment, I wonder, oh, my God, am I going to be too loud? Will I be too loud and, like, take up all this space? Will my voice lift up and dominate the entire room and make it impossible for anybody else to show up? 
Will I take up too much space? And more voices start to show up. You're so harsh. You are so intimidating. Can you just be a little less? The voices from my past, very recent past, too. And I start to recoil inside. I recoil, I get tight, I close my eyes, I wonder what does this mean about me as the teacher, the facilitator, the mentor? What kind of story am I making up about myself in this moment? What will they think? And I am not in my skin and I am not in my body. And I close my eyes again. Because the question is always, what do you want? So I ask myself, I whisper into my own skin, what do you want? What do you want? And I say it out loud to everyone else too, what do you want? And it starts to emerge from inside. What I really want is to fuck this insecurity right out of me. (laughs) Great, now I have something to pay attention to. So I lay on my back with my feet flat on the floor and I'm able to rock back and forth. And this is a time where I actually have to really try. I have to use all the skills that I teach in order to find my way back into the pleasure, back into my own right. And I rock a little bit and I breathe and I get out my my standard (laughs) go-tos. When nothing else is working, these are the things that always work. The S-curve barbell that penetrates and rubs up against my G-spot and, of course, the magic wand, now on at least setting three. (laughs) And I'm rocking and I'm pulsing and I'm concentrating and I'm I'm finding the way, finding the way. And when I can feel that this orgasm is rising up or this series is rising up, I can also feel this great whoosh from my pelvis. I can feel the wetness come out, the squirting come out. I can feel like now I am sitting in a lake. And here we go. And this sound rises up and it rises up into my throat and it comes out and it starts to change shape. And as it does, I can hear this chorus of women across the room and orgasm starting to pop one after the other and some excitement and some yes, yes, yes and some go get it, hallelujah. And it just (laughs) feels like I am pushed through a portal and I become the lioness who is staking her claim over her fresh kill and she is broadcasting her ownership. This is mine. Her jaw is wide and her teeth are bloodied and she says, this is mine. And in that moment, I am not sorry because I am free. 